Hello, welcome to this lesson on how to determine the internal resistance of a power source by your experimental methods. So, in today's lesson, what we'll be looking at is defining what we mean by internal resistance, describing the effect of internal resistance on components, and then calculating the value of internal resistance and terminal potential difference from experimental observations, which links in to this part of the specification, focusing primarily on the practical aspect which is required practical 6 in the A-level course, the investigation of the EMF and internal resistance of electrical cells and batteries by measuring the variation of the terminal PD of the cell with current in it. Now previously we looked at the terms internal resistance and EMF. Now internal resistance is the resistance produced in an electrical circuit by the power source and the electrical wires, basically any output of the circuit not wanted. Now that was caused by the collisions between the mobile charge carriers and the ions of these substances. Now the EMF is the theoretical work done per unit charge provided into an electrical circuit by a power source. Now we've got to be able to determine both these values experimentally, which is actually a required practical required practical 6 of AQA A-level physics. Now, we can find the internal resistance from experimental values by examining the equation for internal resistance. Now, previously we have said the internal resistance equation, which is given to you in your examination book, is equal to EMF to, is equal to EMF equal current times by external resistance, big R, plus internal resistance, small r. Now what we can do is we can make we can times I by both of these uh, values so that equal EMF is equal to I big R plus I small R. Now we can rearrange this to make I big R, which is the load resistance, sorry not the load resistance, the um, terminal potential difference of the circuit as the subject. So we can say that I big R or terminal potential difference is equal to the EMF minus I small r, or the lost volts. Now, with that particular idea, we can then write it out as PD is equal to EMF minus IR, or lost volts. Now, if we place this equation into a straight line equation for a graph, which is Y equals MX plus C, and we link up the terms with each other, if we place the potential difference on the y-axis and the current on the x-axis, that gives us a plus c value of EMF, which indicates that the EMF will be the y-intercept on a graph with PD on the y-axis and current on the x-axis, whilst the gradient of the line, or N in this example, will be minus the internal resistance. So, and that's really important because in physics paper 3, you've got to be able to relate the equation of a straight line graph to y equals mx plus c. So you've got to be able to determine values of any straight line equation by a graphical methods. So if, like we said before, we place the terminal PD or PD of the circuit on the y-axis and the current on the x-axis, we would then, in the investigation, get an ideal line of best fit, which is a straight line with a negative gradient. Now, the y-intercept will give the terminal potential difference, or EMF, of the power source in this value. Now, in actuality, we are actually measuring the terminal potential difference, but in a lot of examples, we'll approximate this to the EMF, because as we'll mention later, in this particular experimental setup, the terminal potential difference and the EMF are going to be very similar values, as we'll have little lost volts in this particular investigation. Now, when deriving the terminal potential difference, you've always got to show all working out on your graph. Now, this shows in theory that this terminal potential difference can only be recorded when the current in the circuit is zero, which will be achieved by measuring the potential difference of the power source when the circuit is open, i.e. if a switch is open in the circuit which is really another way to measure the terminal potential difference directly. So, as we mentioned previously, another name we can give for this particular value 
is the open circuit voltage, as it can only be measured when you've got an open circuit. Now, like mentioned previously, the negative gradient of the line gives the internal resistance of the power source. Now, negative gradients will always give you negative values. So, in this example, the gradient has to be a negative number because it's sloping downwards. But we'll still get a positive value for the internal resistance because we're saying the gradient is the negative internal resistance. Now, it's a common mistake for students to say that the internal resistance is the gradient of the graph. Rather, it's the negative gradient of the line. Now, when working out your uh, internal resistance, please draw the gradient triangle on the graph and make it as large as possible. Because the larger the triangle, the lower the percentage uncertainty of the value. But also, in addition to this, if you have the gradient triangle as large as possible, this will allow you sorry, to get a value which has a high validity because you're considering more terms. Now, just to recap, the internal resistance of an EMF source can be calculated with the following experimental method. Place the power supply in a circuit with a variable resistor with the ammeter in series and the voltmeter in parallel. Step 2. With the variable resistor, alter the load resistance in the circuit, measure the current and the potential difference of the circuit for a variety of values. Plot the data with potential difference on the y-axis and current on the x-axis of your graph, drawing your gradient, which should be a line sloping downwards, a negative trend, and then the equation for the gradient line, because it's a straight line graph, will be y equals mx plus c, which from our rearranged equation, where we've got potential difference on the y-axis and current on the x-axis, means that the gradient of the line is the negative internal resistance, and the y-intercept is the terminal potential difference, or EMF, in this particular example. Now, this is required practical of the course, and it's actually the last required practical needed for the electricity module. So in this next part of the lesson, we're going to look at what the experiment would actually look like. Now, again, just remember, if you want to pass your practical endorsement, there is six key CPAC skills you've got to consider. Following instructions, which is when you can follow instructions correctly without asking for help. Collecting data, where you've got to consider the experimental technique required in the experiment. The risk assessment, which is producing a risk assessment on the hazards, risks and precautions in the investigation. Practical skill four, recording the results, so you draw and complete your own results table. And practical skill five and six, which is drawing your own graph and answering analysis questions correctly. Now, in this investigation, it's looking at calculating the terminal potential difference and the internal resistance of a power pack okay, uh, from experimental methods. So you'll need a power source, a voltmeter, ammeter, rheostats, leads, and crocodile clips. So like mentioned before, we place a rheostat and ammeter in series with the power pack. We place a voltmeter in parallel with the power pack. We alter the connections on the rheostat. You record the potential difference in current in the circuit using voltmeters and ammeters. We record a distinct number of potential differences in current in the circuit, but we don't leave the circuit connected for too long when the resistance is low or when the, when the current is high, because this will cause the circuit and its components to overheat. So, to do the experiment correctly, you would get a power pack and EMS source and set it to 6 volts. Now you'll use electrical wires in your circuit, but remember the internal resistance of these wires will be included in your value for internal resistance you're going to experimentally work out. You'll need a rheostat, which is a variable resistor with two connectors. We place it in the series circuit, and it cannot gain either the maximum or minimum value of the um, current and potential difference. However, you can still achieve a range of results with them. You'll need an ammeter which is going to be placed in series in the circuit. It's going to be used to measure current, and we assume an ammeter to have no resistance. A voltmeter will also be required, which is placed in parallel. It's going to be used to measure potential difference, and we assume it to have an infinite resistance. Now, we'll place the ammeter and rheostat in series with the power pack as an EMF source. Now remember, when you connect in a rheostat, you connect the upper and lower connectors, so you'll gain a variance in results. Now also remember, the rheostat connector works as an exponential function, so a small shift on one side 
will cause a big change in the values, whilst a large shift on the other side will cause a small change in values. Now again, when you set up your circuit, make sure that all the connections are secure to get an actual result and there's no loose connections in your circuit. You will also use the crocodile clip to connect your rheostat into the circuit. Now you'll place your voltmeter in parallel with the power pack so it's plugged directly into that EMF source. Now this is considered safe because the voltmeter has a very high resistance. But well, please note, whilst the voltmeter ideally has an infinite resistance, in reality it only has a very high resistance. So this means the voltmeter still draws a small current through it which will produce some lost volts, which is why your y-axis value, your y-intercept, is actually the terminal potential difference and not the EMF. So in actuality, the EMF which you measure in this investigation is slightly lower than the theoretical EMF. Now, you'll measure values of the current and potential difference in the circuit, and you'll measure these values simultaneously. Now, always remember to switch off the power pack in between the values, or the component will heat up over time and alter the resistance in the circuit, the wires especially. Now, in addition, you should always use a low value for current to ensure the device is never too hot to handle during your investigation. Now, you'll alter the connectors on the real staff to gain different readings. In an experiment, you should choose the number of values you'll take in the investigation, but always have a logical rationale. You must choose the range of values you wish to take, but always have a logical rationale. You must choose the number of repeats you wish to take, but always have a logical rationale. You'll then fill in a results table. Now again, remember, you must draw and complete your own results table, given all values to correct number of decimal places, and have all headings with units and uncertainties. You should then draw a graph of your experimental data, placing the potential difference of the circuit on the y-axis and the current of the electrical circuit on the x-axis. You should always also draw error bars on your data as well. Now, it's probably best in this particular practical not to abbreviate your axis as you try to calculate both the y-intercept and the gradient of the line. So best practice would probably not abbreviate the axis in this case. Now you'll be drawn, like we said before, potential difference on the y and current on the x. Now, with that particular idea, as outlined before, you can calculate the internal resistance of the circuit by the negative gradient and the terminal potential difference or EMF as they're very similar values in this case as the y-intercept. So hopefully in this lesson you can define what internal resistance is, describe the effect of internal resistance on the components and calculate the values of internal resistance and terminal potential difference from experimental methods. Thank you very much for listening to this lesson.